Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wondered how to listen to a fugue? It seems complex, it doesn't seem to have a story, like for instance a prelude. But listening to a fugue is like listening to a conversation between people. And in this case, particularly the fugue we are going to discuss today has a high level of civilization. A way of talking to each other, discussing a serious topic with each other while listening to what the other has to say and also react to that in a civilized way. That's something the world of today could follow as an example, right? We need more Bach. But that you already knew. So welcome to another episode of Beyond the Notes. The recording you heard at the beginning is my own recording of a WTC book one. It's this CD released a few months ago, last year actually. Um, three CDs and a beautiful box, you can buy it if you want. There is a link in the description box. And by the way, if you like the recording of the first book that I made here on this clave accord, the good news for you, I'm in the final preparation to record the second book as well. That's for later this year, I'm recording this early 24, in case you would see this video in 2028. You never know, that's a fascinating thing of YouTube. So without further ado, let's dive into to some fragments of this amazing fugue. A fugue consists out of voices. If compared to a prelude, a fugue has a more strict scheme, especially in Bach's time and especially with Bach. You could say that Bach you know, lifted the fugue or the art of fugue, he even wrote the art of fugue as a bundle of fugues to a level that few other composers ever have reached. So a fugue can have two voices, three voices, four voices, five and even more voices, but in the WTC most fugues have three or four voices. Some have two, some have more, but in this particular case this fugue has three voices. It's in a way the most open structure of all. Four voices makes it more dense. Two voices makes it feel like less of a fugue, but three voices Bach uses the space in between the lower and the higher voice like to the extreme, which makes three-voiced fugues in a way more difficult to play than four-voiced fugues. Each of the voices have one thing in common. They use the same topic, the same theme. So the conversation is about this theme in this case. Already Bach sets here something as a story. This is so beautiful because this has so much, I would say, emotional power. Like if we start with an raising, ascending fifth. That's a sign of hope. And even he goes higher, he lifts that interval, that jump, that energy jump forward to even Capping it with a six, you know, we go back. That's the highest we have here. This is not going to be a very optimistic piece. Last time we spoke about the prelude, of course, that's a very sad piece, and I called it like you almost it's it's sadness in a kind of beautiful way. It's not that you enjoy that, but it's like you can bear it. Bach makes it like goes to the depth of emotions, human emotions, and still you feel like Okay, he's guiding you there. Here, it's the same mood because it's the same key. It's very, but it's more serious. You, we, we get the distance and that's with, with many fugues. You get a, a little bit more distant from direct feelings. It's a discourse and you as a listener, we as a listener, also as a player, you are a privileged witness of that discussion. And so the theme here reflects that. So camping with, so going, Going to the sixth and then going back. What was an ascending fifth is now a dis descending fifth. But we go to a fourth. Again, hope. And it comes to a beautiful close. And what's so beautiful on this fugue, most fugue, but especially this one, is that the preparation for the second team. So here comes the first, the highest voice. And it just does the same thing. Oh, she, it's probably a soprano. And the second voice 
starts interacting with the same topic again it's not commenting it's not like going into your discussion it's like i'm here to listen to what you have to make out of this theme out of this beautiful topic so to say and that's what the second voice does in harmony a little bit of friction but it's more to come to a closure and then let's a little bit of interaction imitation preparation for the third voice here it is three voices have had their say. Let's listen. And then, as you will see at the beginning of the fugue, more than the second half, you have a lot of parallel lines, which is for a fugue not so of, not so normal, I would say. That's not the stereotype fugue, where you have two voices, or even three voices, that follow in parallel or in reverse. Bach applies that here, which makes the fugue, in some instances here, less complex, less um, dense, so to say, to listen to. And this culminates in bar 15 into a beautiful ascending line. And lines that go up is like the cry of humanity, of the human soul crying for help from above to God. And here this is the first um, place where this in a, in a remarkable way comes together. So you have the bass and you have the first voice go together and go to, a certain, to the highest point of the keyboard almost. Here comes. Sorry. Let's listen to this without wrong notes um, in the recording as and, and enjoy this like this this enormous power, this going up like and it's like unstoppable. Of course it comes to a halt because we're going down. We cannot go up all the time. And it's not what Bach wants us to do here. Let's listen. And then we arrive in something you could actually spectacular. In bar 19, you have, an, you have another theme entrance in the second voice. But without waiting for that voice, that person, you could say, to end his discourse, what he has to say about the new elements, perhaps, that he wants to bring on the table, Without waiting, the first voice enters the discussion. So you could say like, yeah, at the beginning we had a very high civilized conversation. Now, the second voice, the first voice actually is interrupting the second voice. But it's not really that. It goes in canon. And going in canon has a high symbolic meaning. It means you follow the other. You could say, I'm going with you in your discussion in your elaboration of that topic. Of course, the third voice is not silent. It goes along with that. But it's like now, as if the third voice is actually an outsider. It's witnessing, it's giving room to these two people. Say, okay, go ahead. You need some time, just have your discussion, have your say.
have a short bridge passage with syncopation. It's some, there is a new element here, and you could say syncopations are a little, it's an element of a little bit of a friction. It, it's taking time that's supposed to be like, you have to wait, syncopation comes too early. Like it, it gives it gives an emphasis on a beat of on the place in the bar where it shouldn't. And by doing that, it creates, of course, a nice rhythm. That's how we perceive it. But in this discourse, it's like, okay, you create something of a friction. Remember, we had eighth notes. We had like, like a beautiful lines that go together. And now suddenly there is something that, you know, um, interrupts that, mu that movement. And it's introduced here. And immediately followed in the first voice. Everybody's taking that. So you create a certain friction to come to a new ending. And guess what happens on that moment? Team entrance. Again in the counter, but now the bass is participating and the left hand of the middle voice is just listen. So we had the theme at the opening, we had the theme in Kanon, symbolizing following each other, listening to each other. And of course, Bach wouldn't be Bach if he, isn't, if he, if he wasn't going to use the theme in, in yet another way. This fugue is spectacular in this. So the theme, as you remember, is uh, was like, like at the beginning, ascending fifth. Now we have it in the reverse. Hey Sibo, what do you want to say? You don't like team entrances in, in the reverse, no? It's too complex for you, but yeah, you're a dog. I mean, how can I explain to you a few? Hey, can I continue? Oh, thank you. So you have a team entrance in the reverse, first voice, second voice participates a few bars later, so no canon anymore. But then we have like about 15 bars without the bass entering. But where is the bass? Isn't, not, isn't the bass participating anymore? Yes, it is. It's just waiting. It has to wait for its turn. And we come in like bar 44, a magic place. There Bach gives room to the entrance, finally, of the bass voice in the reverse mode. Beautiful on the clavichord. It's like a, it's almost like a bassoon, eh? Then the team entrance in reverse in the bass is not followed by, you know, a long exposition of the third voice elaborating on that team entrance. No. Then we get the canons again. A very intense moment. of the bass in reverse mode, the canons, we had other voices participating and then Bach again is closing that section with syncopations but now syncopations that really hurt like if I play it on the, on the, on the keyboard like this you hear but I, if I hit all the syncopations again Jesus, E flat minor, D sharp minor here, actually in the Dover edition. That's the old Bach. Uh, it is very good, actually. Um, so you go down in syncopations that have frictions, and then without knowing. I mean, if you would not know that, you probably won't hear that Bach gives a new entrance of the team, but he does it in a in a hidden way. Bar sixty one, you have the 
A beat A sharp here or B flat, whatever edition you play, and then that's a theme entrance. But what happens in the next bar? He gives yet another version of the fugue, an augmented version. That means he's doubling the note values of the original theme. And of course, you get those together in harmony. It's even more than dub. No, it's doubling. That's a theme. And if it's not enough, while that theme in the bass is still elaborating and playing, the right hand participates. So you have this wonderful structure where Bach doubles the note value of the theme, and then on top of that you have the original rhythm. And so both, all three voices can participate now, or the other two voices can participate in the discussion, in the discourse of the third voice. So, and then we near the end of the piece and Bach creates here a moment of super intense tension, I would say. So, the most gentle civilized discussion, yes, it's still, but there is friction from this bar on, you know. We have had all the themes, we had the reverse themes, we have the augmented versions, everybody has its say and now there is a moment where no themes are actually played. There is just like a bridge. Listen what happens here. You have this interval, that is like, ooh, it's like tension. Then, then, listen what happens here. Trail on the upbeat eighth note, on the soft eighth note. And I play all the noise now. You have here left hand, that's like, it's pain. It's like, it's not pleasant here. So almost, almost these introducing elements of emotion that you would maybe expect more in a prelude than in a fugue, but here it is. And after that moment of friction, we have again the augmented theme and the combination and Bach goes crazy on that. But then we have the coda. And the coda starts like, there's a preparation of that, there's the ending of the theme, but let's say bar 83 is very, very symbolic. Why? You see the return of the parallel lines, thirds and sixths. Remember, we talked about that at the beginning. But what happens here is they go down. There is a coda, kind of. And there we go to a very specific ending of this story. So, again, friction. You have this chord, and then Bach goes down. Listen. Unbelievable. This is so powerful. Listen, we come from the... This is a huge question mark. Unbelievable. And well, how do the others respond to that? Like, you have the first voice, hey, I have something to say. I didn't say it before, can I make my point now? A moment of tension, like suspense. What is the reaction? There we go. We go in harmony. But where do we go? Again, the same point. So we come here. We go down, down, again. So we have... Sorry. And then... 
complete harmony. The left hand goes down, but the right hand goes up together with the second voice. Oh, chromatic lines, but now climbing higher, forcing your way to where you want to be. Let's listen to this fragment um, on the recording as well. And so yes, fugues maybe require a little bit of a li different listening attitude, like it's different. You might miss some of the elements that makes preludes so enjoyable. That's also why a prelude is like oftentimes introducing or preparing the way for a beautiful fugue. But at the same time, Bach lifts that fugue, the, the, the concept of a fugue to a much higher level. There's a civilized conversation and there are elements that Bach introduces maybe in a less obvious way, but that can open your heart and your soul as much as it does in the prelude. And the key for me always is like the final note. Sometimes as a listener today, we are spoiled, I think, by also many recordings that are just super fast. And it gives you this instant impulse. This may be something of our time. But if you can step back and you just wait until the last chord has been played and then you will feel what happened before. And that's a different way of reward as a listener. The reward comes afterwards, it's not instant. But I can tell you, those rewards that come afterwards are the best. Very interesting it would be to compare this fugue with the prelude. I made a Beyond the Notes on the prelude as well, which you can find by clicking on this thumbnail. And also, we have an incredible Patreon community. If you want to become part of that, of that really dynamic community, and also support the things that we are doing, there's a link in the description box below. Thank you for checking that out. Thank you for watching. We see each other very soon again. Bye.